Climate change, a big part of Idaho science standards being discussed last week at the State House. Outside of all the testimony and acrimony in the House Education Committee, there was a presentation delivered to the House Resources and Conservation Committee last Thursday. The topic, climate change and its impact on Idaho. The conclusion, to use the presenter's term, modest. The presenter, the Heartland Institute. Specifically, James Taylor, the director of the Arthur B. Robinson Center for Climate and Environmental Policy. The Heartland Institute, if you're familiar, is a conservative group based in Illinois, and Mr. Taylor told me his presentation wasn't requested, but he heard there were calls for Idaho-specific data in last year's brief climate change hearings. However, he admitted to the committee and to us in putting together his presentation, he did not ask input from Idaho scientists. So we did. We took Mr. Taylor's climate change claims to an MIT graduate, now Boise State professor, who's been researching climate in Idaho for a decade. And in, in compiling this Idaho specific information, did you consult with any Idaho scientists? Uh, not, not in, um, in person, but the best data is available from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And what does that data say? The data shows quite clearly that over the past century, although temperatures have increased modestly in Idaho, uh, they've increased at a slower pace than has been the case nationally. And, uh, and globally. Again, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has very detailed records for Idaho, and what it shows is that there has been an increase in precipitation in Idaho, as has been the case nationally, uh, as temperatures have moderately risen. And in the case of precipitation, uh, the lion's share of that precipitation increase is occurring during the driest months of the year. So it's coming at the most beneficial time. Is this true? Uh, no, it is not true. Precipitation in Idaho, in a place like Idaho, really is only helpful if it's snowpack and in the wintertime. Um, and so when you pair in any increases in precipitation um, with warmer temperatures, it's particularly problematic because it means that more precipitation is falling as rain rather than snow, uh, which creates a situation in which we get earlier runoff, uh, increases the likelihood of floods, and also that water ultimately, because it doesn't wind up in snowpacks, is, is unavailable for irrigation later on in the season when, when it's really needed by the crops. Government officials have adjusted older temperature data to make it appear right. colder. Is that, where are you getting that? If you look at their, their data that they had reported previously, uh, they reported temperatures that uh, were not as cold back in the early 20th century as they now claim was the case. Is this true? No, it is not true. There is very strong agreement between instrumental, so on the ground, observation stations, satellite, and model estimates. All of them show consistently that warming is increasing in the past decades. Uh, and more than that, there's, there's been no so-called so pause or hiatus in, in warming, say, towards the end of the, 20, um, the 2000 aughts. Did you talk to any farmers about what they're seeing specifically, like when it comes to growing seasons and such? But what my study did provide was objective data for the state of Idaho, showing that uh, as temperatures have increased, uh, we've seen record yields for the most important Idaho crops. And the most important thing, rather than speaking to a farmer in Idaho or elsewhere, is to look at the data compiled by the U.S. Department of Agriculture specific to Idaho. And it shows that uh, crop yields are growing, increasing year after year as the climate warms. That's a wonderful thing. Is this true? Um, the problem is, is that it's, it's getting warmer more rapidly in the mountains, particularly in the winter, which again contributes to uh, earlier peak and snow, snowpack and earlier runoff. And we don't have evidence that there is increases in precipitation in Idaho. The increases in crop yields we've seen are largely due to technological innovations in the agricultural sector, particularly things like genetic modification of crops, um, better, more focused application of, of fertilizer and herbicides, um, and that's responsible for the vast majority of increases we've seen in crop yields. Mr. Taylor, who is not a scientist, wanted to make clear his presentation wasn't an argument about what will happen. He wasn't speculating, simply offering up a composition of facts. Dr. Flores, meanwhile, hopes presentations like this will lead to more conversations about climate change between lawmakers and actual Idaho scientists. That's the same sentiment we heard from Representative Elena Rebell, assistant minority leader and member of the Resources Conservation Committee. She sat through Mr. Taylor's 20-minute presentation last week, and she offered this take on his conclusion 
that Idaho has seen modest effects of climate change and is actually benefiting from it. She said, and I quote, I was very disappointed that while our own Idaho scientists were denied an opportunity to present their full conclusions to present to committee, Mr. Uh, Taylor, an out of town lawyer whose statements were not supported by any Idaho scientist, his conclusions fly directly in the face of every piece of data and reasoning I have ever heard from an Idaho scientist, end quote. I also reached out to GOP leadership on the committee and you've yet to hear back on this. Rubel hopes for a full committee hearing on climate change complete with scientists from the gem state. We'll see what happens.